Facioscapular humeral muscular dystrophy is a slowly progressive muscle disease. It affects the body in, in a very simple way that you lose muscle tone across the body. It's a disease that the progression is not set out in any textbook. It depends on a lot of factors and in some cases it's very aggressive and in some cases it's very mild. My name is Bill Moss and I have FSHD. <laughs> We found out about Mitchell when he was about 18 months old. Um, we knew about, we, well I knew something was wrong with Mitch from about six months old. I could just Stop tell. Stop laughing me at, Hang on. Stop laughing at me ladies. No one's laughing at you. Um, from Thank about six know. months old, we um, could just tell he was not clinging as, as most children would. Um, and then once we did actually get that diagnosis of, of FSH and that's when we were explained, well, in you know 70% of cases it's directly from one or both parents so then we both got tested and then we found out that Marcel has it yeah so then all my side of the family so all then, got tested and, and they, they were all clear so basically it just spontaneously so Marcel started the, yeah yeah and the first in the family to to start it which I would have never known if I didn't have a child <laughs> which is the bizarre thing about it I would have gone through life not knowing anything and um, yeah and, and Mitch unfortunately he, he didn't have that luck. We sometimes think why couldn't he get it when he was you know in his 20s or 30s or yeah and at least have those 20 centers. good years you know. Having it so young and yeah. you can just see that it is or give it, me, it, it give me going, some. <laughs> yeah it is going to I'll, be possibly share a, some, a yeah. severe case of FSHD oh, yeah. just in the no smiling, just in the way that his, you know, lordosis, which is a curvature of the <coughs> spine, is very severe. Mm. You think if he, if he didn't get this till he was 20, he would be able to run, he would be able to, you know, play soccer, get through school okay, but it's just not going to be like that. So we just have to take it, I guess, day by day. Yeah, that's all we can do, really. <laughs> About six years ago, I from talking to certain specialists, they sort of brought up the idea of, um, you know, starting a family and whatnot. And at the time I was single, I wasn't in a relationship, so I kind of just put it at the back of my mind. I thought, you know, I'm probably gonna be a bachelor for a while, so I don't need to think about that. Obviously, you know, when you are in a relationship and, and things progress and then you start, and you do think about you know, I just turned 30 last year and you start to think about, well, what's the next 10 years hold and that kind of stuff. Um, it's, there's no, you know, there's, there's no decisions, I suppose. There's options, whether you try to do something about it, if you want to have a child one day to prevent your child from having it, for example. If you just, you know, throw caution to the wind and have a child and just, you know, let nature take its course. Um, these are the kind of the things that you think about. I don't know, it's not yeah. something you want to kind of hide away, you want to keep it open hmm. and just take a chance, I guess. I have discussed FSHD with my children from a very early age and it's important that, you know, I've had some very frank discussions with them about what it might mean to their life. They don't know whether they've got the disease. They were tested and unfortunately Rochester lost the results. And at that stage I decided, well, maybe that's fate. Genetically there's a 50% chance they've got it. And it's very 
you know, interesting to look at people and try and analyse and guess whether they've got it or not, but I refuse to do that. Um, if they do have this disease, they could have it in a, a minor way or they could have it in a, in a progressive way. But I think ultimately the decision to be tested is theirs and they'll make that decision at the right time. I guess there is no cure, there is no treatment at this stage. So I personally don't want to know what's ahead, or at least know what's ahead, even though sometimes you naturally think about it. I guess I just support the community and those who have it in the hope that maybe if I do have it, maybe one day that there will be a treatment for it, or it's not so much if I have it, it's more the fear of if my children would have it. I'm confident I don't have it and I'm also confident that if I did it wouldn't be the end of the world because they're such a supportive community and I'll tell you what, we're going to do it. We're going to raise enough support in the community to find a cure for this so whether I have it or I don't, um, I don't really need to know right now. Families say that they get this diagnosis and they feel like they cannot be normal anymore and when they sit down and you say why and they say because our dreams are gone and you say well what dreams do you have and they say well we wanted to have a family or whatever and when they realize that actually all right this terrible diagnosis has happened but you don't have to let go of all your dreams you can actually keep going and one of them often is having a healthy baby and they just feel and to be able to give them that that um, ability to help have a healthy baby. It feels like, and, and these people usually have so much strength and then they, they grab onto various things and, and, and keep going. The FSHD Global Research Foundation is extremely progressive. By supporting us at Jenea in developing a cellular model uh, to be able to hopefully uh, trial different drug therapies and even find a cure. Uh, that support is absolutely irreplaceable. Now we think, if we did know that Marcel had it first, what if we had chosen not to have children? We would never have Mitch. Had Mitch, yeah, that's and the we thing. And we would never. And if you ask Mitch, would you not want to be here? You know what I mean? When he's older, like. Yeah, so it's not a question, it's hard to answer it, that it's one. It's a very hard, it's a very personal question that they would have to to work through. It's not something that someone yeah. can tell them what to do or they can't, you know, I guess just go off other people's opinions. They have to work out what's best for them and, you know, are they willing to, to try the 50-50? Are they prepared to go through big life changes if they do have a child that has FSH? They might um, be mildly affected. They might be severely affected. You just don't know with this disease, you know, so. Mm. I knew I had this disease before I made a decision to have children. And my wife and I at the time discussed this quite openly. Should I have children or should I not have children? And I suppose if I'd have known it before I was married, we'd have probably been, we'd have probably discussed, will I get married or not? So your life changes depending on the facts. I look back on my own life up to that point, and I said that if I was given a choice to have either lived my life or not lived my life, what would I do? And I said to myself, I would definitely live my life. So what other people decide when they have that decision to make is up to them. My hope is they don't have this disease. That's my hope. If you had and you're thinking and I had children and you're thinking maybe I should have children because I'm going to pass it on to my child. Well, it's not really a world that all the mother lives in and everyone is the same and everyone is perfect because I think that it's different in people, make people, make people better. But I think the people that have this ability to make the world a more compassionate, more understanding place.